What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the quartering, and something fishy, very fishy, is going on at Kotaku. Now, companies, I think, you know, generally have a lot of churn or a decent amount of churn. People come, people go. You don't see a lot of new hires from Kotaku, though. You don't see a lot of people publicly saying, I'm making the move from Vice.com to Kotaku. I'm making the move from Motherboard to Kotaku. You only really have lately seen people very making very public exits from the site. Starting with, back in December, Cecilia D'Anastasio, who is best known for uh, breaking the uh, Riot Games uh, the uh, Ma women at Riot Games suit, which, well, Riot Games ended up having to pay out. So maybe there was some real legitimate ev evidence there. Uh, what I remember most fondly about her high-level, deep uh, investigative reporting was something about managers farting in people's faces. You know, deep, deep investigative reporting brought to you by Kotaku.com and, you know, which Pokemon you'd want to sleep with. Things like that. Now... Web traffic, I think, traditionally, I don't think it's fair to say, look, every other website on the planet is flourishing and Kotaku is withering and dying. Websites are dying in general. Look, I run exclusively games.com, by the way. I don't tell enough people about it. It's an ad-free website that covers video games and gaming without any political slant. It's crowdfunded, and even that has a very difficult time growing traffic every month because... People nowadays prefer to get their gaming news from YouTube and uh, Twitter, to be honest with you. And reading long-form blogs doesn't appeal to as many people as it once did, and advertising dollars are scarce. Now, if you look at back in December when Kotaku uh, used to run, short term, they ran uh, site-wide ads for farmers insurance, I believe. Then... Uh, why all of a sudden were these site-wide autoplay farmers insurance ads coming? Well, because their parent company, GNO Media, had sold farmers insurance a bill of goods saying, look, if you give us a large sum of money, we promise this number of impressions. An impression is just how often your ad displays. When GNO Media realized that they were never going to meet what they promised farmers in exchange for this money, they started doing this autoplay ad on the website, which everybody hates, all right? Now, what is bad, though, is you had guys like Jason Schreier publicly posting emails of their bosses, telling people to uh, email them because you don't like these ads for farmer's insurance, which is ridiculous considering those ads are exactly what pays their salaries. But nonetheless, I don't think you'd find anybody out there supporting these ads. It's just directional in terms of where the traffic is. Uh, with Kotaku.com. Now, if you look at their Alexa rank, now, what is an Alexa rank? Well, in short, it's basically um, how popular your website is. The, they define it as it's a global ranking system that ranks millions of websites in order of popularity. The lower your number, the more popular your site is. It's calculated by looking at the estimated daily unique visitors and number of page views for a given site over the past three months. The lower your Alexa rank, the more popular the website is. Now, Kotaku.com has been decreasing significantly over the past 90 days. In fact, they've dropped 256 spots. They rank 2,161 currently, but they have seen as high or as low as, I'm sorry, a lowest rank of 1918. So, you know, it's it's not nothing to say that, you know, hey, you're in the top 2,000 websites in America or in the world, I'm sorry. But over the past 90 days, they have now dropped to 2138, a drop of 256 positions with total daily page views down 2% and daily time on site down 10%. Now, overall, your bounce rate as 62.5%. That's people that just view one article and leave without clicking around. That's more about usability in most cases than anything else. Now, GNO Media, the corporate owner for Kotaku, uh, had told the Deadspin staff to, quote, stick to sports because they didn't want the pol political slant in their content. And, of course, that was 
re soundly revolted and lots of people quit from Deadspin, which, hey, I give you all the credit in the world. If you want to whine about it on Twitter, I don't have time for you. But if you quit and you go find another job, that's, hey, that's good for you. If you want to talk about, you know, drumpf and baseball instead of just baseball, then you find a spot to do that. Deadspin said, hey, we don't want to be that anymore. Now, the memo leaked and said, to create as much great sports journalism as we can requires 100% focus on our resources on sports. And it will be the sole focus, Mainment said. Uh, Deadspin will write only about sports and that which is relevant to sports in some way. Top editorial leader at Geno Media, the new company overseeing Deadspin, Gizmodo, Jezebel, Lifehacker, and a number of former Gawker media sites that also Kotaku, by the way, employees uh, told employees that stories with tie-ins to sports were permitted to run on the site, but they should have not. They should leave non-sports stories to the company's other websites, where the subjects touch on sports. They are fair game to Deadspin. That uh, they do not. When they do not, they are not. We have plenty of other sites that write about politics, pop culture, the arts, and the rest, and there are appropriate places for such. Now, of course, a bunch of entitled journals at Deadspin had a hissy fit, and that's of course their right. Fast forward now uh, to December when Kotaku is, I think, probably being told to stick to video games. That's a hypothesis I've had. I really haven't seen as many woke type articles on Kotaku.com lately. I know this because whenever there's like a total piece of trash article, you guys all send it to me. And this is right around the time when GNO Media started to say to Deadspin, hey, stick to sports. I'm guessing they told Kotaku, told Kotaku to stick to video games. And you see Kotaku and Deadspin futures in doubt. This is back in late October. After rebel rebel against parent company GNO Media. Deadspin staff objects to stick to sports memo. We talked about that. And then Kotaku uh, putting out staff encourages readers to complain about autoplay ads. Shortly after the stick to sports memo had leaked, a post titled a note to our readers was published on Deadspin, Kotaku, and other sites owned by GNO Media. The post focused on the use of sound on autoplay videos on Geno Media said that the editorial staffers at all company at all levels of the company had made their concerns known to management and encourage others to submit feedback on their ads. So essentially, go you don't like it, go complain to my bosses about the ads that are paying our salaries. Many, many staffers uh, from members of these sites also encourage readers to complain to Geno Media on Twitter and frame the ads as atrocious and awful. I'm sure farmers love that so much. In fact, they pulled their entire advertising contract from the websites after this. You had Schreier saying, if the atrocious ads on our website are bothering you, here's how to contact Kotaku's new private equity owner and management team. Here's Kelsey McKinney. It's terrible getting emails from readers about how they want to read the stories you worked hard on but can't because they're auto-playing videos everywhere. Then you had David Roth. Also, on the awful new thing on the site that everybody hates, there is and then an article. Tired of the ads and user experience on Geo Media websites? We are as well. Maybe you can politely tell some folks about it. And this is Heather Alexandria, another Kotaku writer. Of course, the GMG Union chimed in on it and everybody else. Now, Cecilia decided to go move uh, after three and a half wonderful years. This is my final day at Kotaku. I have made much gratitude. Um, I'm excited to start working in January. I'll be working at Wired. Now, Wired is a much larger website than Kotaku uh, that covers probably more topics than Kotaku does, but they live in the same world. Now, on Friday, Gita Jackson, who I believe wrote the articles about opening sperm banks in The Sims and all sorts of other D-Gen type articles, made a post. Hi, I have a little news today. This is my last day at Kotaku. Starting on January 21st, I'll be at Motherboard, writing about internet culture, YouTube, and Twitch, and yes, video games. I'm having every emotion at once. I love Kotaku so much and admire these people I've worked with for the past three years. This was a difficult decision to make. I can't even think about it without tearing up. So moving to um, Vice, a more SJW, openly kind of SJW website. And then you also saw Joshua Rivera. Hi, this is also my last day at Kotaku. I'll be freelancing again. This person quit Kotaku without even a backup plan. You can peep me doing stuff at The Verge and GQ Magazine, and maybe with you if you want me to write for you. It's been real. This dude just quit with no backup plan whatsoever. 
publishing an article, Goodbye from Josh and Gita. Today, Joshua Rivera and Gita Jackson are both leaving Kotaku. They sat down to talk about what they love about this place, as well as the state of games, journalism, and diversity, worker solidarity, and herbs. So basically, you have you know two more woke writers, in my opinion, leaving. So... You know, I don't have any evidence of this, but you had Cecilia, who is extraordinarily woke, uh, even rebuking another games journalist who gave her credit. But since he has the wrong opinion, she told him to keep her name out of his mouth. Then you have Gita Jackson, Joshua Rivera. And if you look now, Emily Lipstein, who worked at Gizmodo, same company, also quitting Friday. Some news after two and a half years. Today is my last day at GMG. That's Gizmodo Media. I'll be starting at Motherboard as their senior social editor later this month. So Vice looks like they took both Gita Jackson and Emily Lipstein out of Kotaku. Now, these are websites that more, I would say, embrace the woke culture. But it is curious. One does wonder, are these more rats sinking, fleeing the sinking ship? Were these people that were told, hey, look, Look all around you, get woke, go broke is the one undeniable truth in 2020. And we don't have any room for articles about, you know, sperm banks and Sims 4 and which Pokemon you'd want to hook up with. Most people don't want that stuff anymore. See, the thing is, there's a fine line with clickbait and with my little kitty, Annie. Oh, my little Annie. Hold me in your arms, babe. There's a fine line with clickbait and hate bait and rage bait where eventually people tune it out. For a while, you'll get lucky and you'll see something spread like wildfire. But more and more and more, people are using archive.is to spread these things. People are dunking on them. The, the, the economy dunking on trash woke articles from Kotaku is far bigger than just the actual articles themselves. I've always said these people don't buy anything. They don't use your products they don't buy your items and we can see look on friday another woke company college humor closed down 100 people gone i think you're going to see more and more of these websites shuttering in the 2020 2021 era because there's just no way to sustain this level of outrage all the time people are sick of being preached to they just want to read about their video games and their and whatever their pastime is in, in deadspin's case their sports there's something going on at Kotaku, I think, here, and it'll be interesting to see how the rest of this year plays out. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.